welcome to Married to Movies. Industry insiders John Russell and Tracy Kring live and work happily in cinema matrimony. They're sharing behind the scenes adventures of writing, producing, and appreciating films. Good morning, babe. Good morning. How you doing, baby? <laughs> um I slept really good, so I'm happy. That's nice. I uh, I think I slept good. I don't know. Sometimes you, you really can't tell. But uh, this coffee is excellent this morning. And we're actually having carbs this morning. Toast. Super, super stoked about this. It must be Christmas. My name is uh, John Russell Kring. And I'm Tracy. And this is Married to Movies. Movie. No, it was going to be married to, and then you said to, and I went movies. Oh, okay. That, you, Do it again. You, okay. And this is married to movies. No. It, 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 no it you flubbed it on purpose. I, and here's the other problem with that. I get the two really good words, and you just end up with the two. You're making sandwiches over there. Oh, no. I, wa- I wonder if uh, yesterday's podcast, like, if these will come out in order, and people will understand what making sandwiches is. Well, maybe we should mix them up just so people have to pay attention. That's a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> so we're going to be ASMR crunching toast this morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on, baby. Put your, put your pants back on. It's a family show. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I make great guacamole. There is a massive misconception by, let me just say it, white people, of what guacamole is. Mm-hmm. Okay? When we're talking about white people, me being one, but understanding that guacamole is more than just crushed up avocado. Guacamole is supposed to have flavor. It's supposed to have taste. It's supposed to have, you know, a variety of things. Let's say it's supposed to have garlic. It's supposed to have tomato. It's supposed to have onion. Well, now, cilantro. Maybe, maybe, but maybe that's what white people put in it. I don't know. Authentically, I've never been to Mexico. You know what? Fuck authentically. Okay. What tastes good? What what gives something okay. flavor? I have a trick. I put a little spoonful of mayo in mine. Mm-hmm. Now, that is not authentic. No. I seriously doubt it. No. But I feel like it makes it super creamy and mm. kind of wards off some of the browning. Mm. Along with lime juice, of course. Gotta have a little lime juice in there. Absolutely. So... I wanted to... Talk. Hopefully you, you've written this all down because we gave you a great guacamole uh, recipe there. Just letting you know. Okay. I wanted to talk about... I told you last night, I'm not going to talk to you about this show okay. we're watching because I want to talk about it on the podcast. Okay. Okay. What was the name of it? Class of 09? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it actually has like the, the girl who gets, um, spoiler alert, killed at the end of the first season. Kate Mara. Of yeah. She gets pushed off, you know, into the train. Right. Got her in it. She's really good. She's a good actress. She is a good actress. We were actually going, hey, you know, she would be really good in our movie Sky Valley. Right. Uh, she's a She's a good age. I don't know. I just like her. Lots of other, you know, talented people in this thing. I'm look. I'm looking him up. He's uh he's from Atlanta. Uh, he plays a uh, paper boy in Atlanta. Yeah, I really really love him. Oh yeah. Yeah. His name is uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Nice. Brian yeah. Tyree Henry, and he, I think he he was also in that uh that movie that um was on uh, Apple TV uh, starring where it was like her and him and she and they're always like in the pool in the trailer together. Uh, Katniss, Katniss Everdeen, Jessica. What is her name? Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Thank you, Jennifer Lawrence. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, oh, the one where... Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, man. Freeway. See, it's like that. It's, yeah, it's some, you U-turn. know. U-turn. Yeah, it has something something to do with our the national highway system. Yeah. Or driving. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Okay. No, it's not Wrong Turn. That's a horror movie. Okay. Bullet Train. No, that's not it. No. Causeway. Causeway. I didn't even watch that movie. No. The just just so you know what class of 09 might be about. It's uh evidently this girl. She gets recruited to be in the FBI. Right. She ends up going to like Quantico to go to school. Right. We're flashing 
from the future to the past. Right. And it's like futuristic. Yes, right. Exactly. Like part of it is set in 2034. Right. And part of it is set in... And they in- have like... I'm just saying, they have like those kind of like store-bought effects with the like robotic eyeball thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, very just out of a effects pack kind of uh, effects. Mm-hmm. Like all the screens are like the air screens. I don't know. It, it also kind of always bothers me when we're talking about, okay, so this is the future... Which is basically 11 years, 11 from, years now, from now. 11 years from now. And we're going full minority report here. I mean, I don't think so. I really, I really don't think so. You know, I mean, where people are like, you know, the whole thing where there's the screen and people are like moving it with their hand and it's moving and all this type of stuff. I'm just like, no, 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 no. I don't know. Well, kind, kind of ridiculous. So she's. In this particular scene that we're going to act out, the script that I wrote. Okay. Now, the action paragraphs, I just kind of, you know, flubbed those in so you would know what was going on. Right. So, she's been recruited to join the FBI and she's heading towards Quantico for her FBI okay. training. Okay. So, the setup here is the woman driving towards a Quantico entrance sign. She stops the car in the street, staring at the sign. A car behind her honks. The man driving gestures out the window to move. She drives on and then parks and gets out of the car. The guy ends up parking right next to her with no cars around them. Why would you park right next to someone? Well, let's start with the fact that nobody stops in the middle of the road to look at a sign. Everybody is aware, unless they're not looking in their rearview mirror, that they're in the middle of the road. No. And this is just a very... You know, a very cheese ball like, oh, wow, look. Look where I am. I'm entering the palace. Yeah, it's super cliche. It's I think super this cliche. was written by FBI agents. Or, <laughs> or by an AI. The guy ends up parking right next to her with no cars around them. He watches her walk by. He follows her up the steps of an official looking building. Hey, you know, you can't just stop like that in the middle of the road. Sorry, who are you? Why? You think I look too old? Too old for what? To be your classmate. Oh, no. I, I didn't think you looked old at all. I'm Ashley Poet, but everybody calls me Poet. I'm Murphy. I'm a cop. Or was a cop. Hmm. Makes sense since you pulled me over. <laughs> well, old habits. Uh, 12 years at Salt Lake City. What about you? I was a nurse. He opens the door for her and they walk inside. Oh my God. Is your heart just about to burst with pride? <laughs> They stand there, taking in, and then look at each other. You get nervous around people, don't you? He looks taken aback. You try to be funny, but it just ends up sounding obnoxious, and then you're left scratching your head wondering what went wrong. He laughs to himself. Well, you want to know what I think? I think we're about to have one of those friendships that starts off really bad, but then gets really good. She chuckles and walks forward. He just stands there watching. She looks over the balcony railing and stares at a gigantic FBI emblem on the floor below. And scene. That shit was bad. It's so bad. It's so... It's like, people don't talk like this. People don't do this. I'm just letting everybody know, I was purposely delivering the dialogue in a very stilted and bad way, because that's kind of what he ended up doing. I heard that line. We both heard that line. My name's Ashley Poet, but everybody calls me Poet. And we were just like, turn it off. Turn it off. I'm not watching this crap. It was. I, I told Tracy that when I looked at the actress and she said that, I could tell that her soul died a little bit inside. She had probably gotten into a huge fight with uh, the director. I was like, don't make me say this. Nobody would actually say this. Please, please don't make me say this. Right. She even kind of blinks a couple of times uh, when, you, she's when she said to, She's like, she, I'm, 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 I'm trying to make this work. Uh. She's trying to throw the line away, which is what you should do. You should throw it far, far away. I will make this point for screenwriters out there or directors out there or anybody out there who's making films. You're, the names of your characters aren't cute. The audience does not give a shit. Right. The audience cares so little about their cutesy name. Right. And guess what? The audience cares even less when you start describing why they're named a cutesy name. Yeah, it it really just makes everything just seem cheap, you know. It's like, oh. you know, uh, hi, this is Detective, you know, 
Mike Hammer. You know, it, 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 it's just... I'm named Hammer because... Yeah, but, you know, everything is a nail really to me. I really cracked the case. Or I'm, or I'm always... I always hit the nail on the head. I'm always nailing girls, you know? Um, okay. It's, just, I, and it's so stupid. We did this one time in a script, um, and a good friend of ours and collaborator and co-writer, uh, Josh, I'll actually name Josh because okay. he's awesome and maybe he's listening. Hey, Josh. Love you. <laughs> he read it and he was like, Jesus Christ with the cutesy names. You know? <laughs> he was like, if you have to explain why somebody is named something, like, please stop. What was the uh, script that he's talking about? I don't remember. Was it one of ours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something that we had written. Oh, Absolutely. Geez. Oh, okay. Absolutely. And, and I, I really, mm. you know... I really appreciate Josh for being honest, giving good feedback because I have I have tried to avoid that in future. And this was a perfect example. We do have a movie called Hobo Jesus and Jesus is his name and that is basically something that he created for sort of his own purposes. What, the name? Yeah, Jesus. Oh yeah, Hobo yes. Jesus. I mean, well people just call him Jesus. Yeah, yeah, they call him Jesus, but yeah, he he is basically But that's not got to be explained. That like m- millions of people are named Jesus. That's true. Okay? That doesn't need but it's explanation. But spe- it's spelled differently. Well, we spelled it different because we didn't want people just to say Hobo Jesus. Mm-hmm. And we had to come up with a, a phonetic spelling of it that right. would be different. Right. But that d- it's never explained. It's never it, gone into. It's just a, a on the poster thing. Right. Right. Josh also was the co-writer with yeah. us on that film. Yes. That was a, re- that was a really interesting experience. Uh, re- real quick aside here, even though I've, I've been told that my asides are problems. That was an interesting experience because... Josh came in uh, to our house, just uh, uh, met a character on the bus. He was riding on the bus. Well, evidently it was a character who was in town. Basically, he's like this uh, uh, homeless guy who, you know, is... Has, has a this, staff. Has a staff and is kind of prophetic and people say that he Looks used like to... Jesus. Right, and they say that he used to, like, uh, be brilliant and used to go to college and well, he's in, in Troy, there's like the RPI, right? You know, the big technical college mathematics and all this stuff. And it, it, the vibe was that he just mentally he cracked, right? Exactly. You know, sort of, sort of like uh, what they talked about in uh, Goodwill Hunting. That you know, uh, that's what happened to Timothy Mc Timothy McVeigh. Great scene, by the way, with Robin Williams. You know describing what happens when a genius cracks. Right. So Josh comes and he says, I think we should create a movie. Josh said he thought we should totally base a movie off of that character. Right. Hobo. The hobo in Troy. Right. <laughs> the hobo Jesus that carries his staff. That and that's just one of the one of the many, many ways inspiration can come. Right. You know, is just from, okay, you know, here, you know, here is something that we can kind of begin with that we start with and i'll say i don't remember who came up with the idea i think it was you but it could have been josh but honestly it was me it was all three of us because the circumstance had to exist for the idea the idea was that this character would hobo his way into town and just start trying to gather resources like a place to live a way to eat right he had no money Right. You know, he would try to gather resources by t- coming up to strangers and telling them, you know, if you give me a week and we trade this resource for my effort, I'll, I'll change your life in seven days. Yeah. It's like, tell me what the biggest problem you have in your life is. And in seven days, uh, it'll be better. I will help you uh, try to figure out whatever that problem is. If you buy me dinner or if you give me a place to sleep or something like that. So it's kind of this barter system. In the film, what we end up finding is that through creating a community around himself as the center of it. Right. People were able to solve their own problems. Exactly. They were able to actually, really, Jesus was just a conduit really figured out that he could be the hub that all of the other, you know, spokes of the wheel could connect to. And then he could connect everybody together. Now, this goes extraordinarily well sometimes, and it goes extraordinarily badly sometimes, just like, you know, 
everything in life when you try to basically get in and uh, fix other people. Uh, and some people don't want to really don't want to be fixed, or their motivations are you know quite skewed. If you Google hobo. Hobo Jesus, H E Y S E U S. Yeah. H E Y S E U S. Mm -hmm. If you Google that, you'll find it online. You can watch it. That one has a really cool story, too, which I'm going to do on a slide. Okay. <laughs> Hobo Jesus has a really cool story about how we ended up making the film because originally I was going to shoot it and we were going to do it in our like down and dirty indie style. And we had cast, we wanted to cast um, this one actor. I'll call him Theo. We wanted to cast him in another film, mm -hmm. but we couldn't. Uh, it just didn't match up. Okay. I just want to point out that the made up name for the person that you just made up was the actual person's name. But they don't know. I'll call him Theo. <laughs> what? <laughs> you absolutely should not be in the witness protection program. <laughs> we'll call him uh, Al Capone. <laughs> wait, wait. You mean Al Capone? <laughs> you no, know, it's a made-up name. Al yeah, Capone. yeah, it's yeah, it's, 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 it's totally a made-up. It sounds like the gangster, <laughs> but it's a made-up <laughs> name, Al Capone. <laughs> Cell phone. Wow. When you get put on the spot sometimes, just gold. Gold falls out of your mouth like, like a fish. Stop You're just falling out of your mouth. That's amazing. Stop making fun of me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She got the sillies. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. His, Thank you, Theo. His mm. name is really Theo. Yes, it is. And I'll call him Theo. Yes, exactly. Because that's his name. Because that's really his name. Exactly. I was thinking about, like, maybe we should change the names to protect the innocent. Yeah. So, Theo was super excited to finally work with us. And he was, like, posting about us on Facebook. And he shared one of my posts which was about my inspiration for the visuals and the vibe of the film. And I had used a lot of paintings of my grandfather's. My grandfather had passed away recently and I really wanted to kind of like pay homage. And this film I thought matched with the vibe, very rural, very pastoral, mm -hmm. you know, like little white farmhouses with clothes hanging on the, on the line outside from trees, you know, right. like, Things like that. Very, very country. Right. And so he shared that post and a DP who he had worked with in the past, who followed him on Facebook, saw the visuals, talked to Theo, called us up mm -hmm. and said, hey, guys, I want to bring all of this talent, all of this experience, all of this gear, all of these people to your project. He basically br brought an entire film crew. Yeah, he, he brought everybody. Right. It was like John and I and Josh, and I'm working in New York City all the time. I'm shooting that visual, the urban, crusty urban visual all the time. He's a very, very uh, popular uh, model photographer and uh, does a lot of corporate work and he does commercial work. I think he'd want a Tony. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, Just he, a great guy. Yeah. Gr a, a, talented. Extraordinarily talented guy, but he had never shot a feature film before. And he wanted to get out of the city and shoot, you know, this kind of visual. He was very inspired uh, by my grandfather's paintings. Upstate New York. Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch, the graphic t-shirt store to outfit you for your next film set. Be the person wearing the t-shirt everyone asks, hey, where'd you get that shirt? Cast and crew alike love these inside jokes and filmmaking inspired designs. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. We actually shot it about 15 minutes from Albany in Castleton on the Hudson. Which is a just a beautiful, beautiful place because it is... Right across the river, you can see Albany, but it feels like a completely different world from it. It feels like you're in the Midwest. So, John and Josh are in the pickup truck scouting locations. Yes. Okay. And they drive outside of Albany over to this area. I think Josh probably knew about that area. Skodak. They actually, because we needed police, and I would not suggest writing police into your script... 
That's kind of a bad idea. Yeah, it really is. Because <clears throat> most of the time you have to fake it, and it doesn't look good when you fake well, it. Well, and to fake it even well, you know, you need real costume-looking things, you mm-hmm. know. you And to get a cop car, that's not easy either. No. Especially in this day and age where... Yeah. You know the cops are the bad guys, basically, and they we don't... A- we actually we actually did a movie in Florida where the police were going to let us uh, rent a car because they uh, will let you do that. Basically, if you pay for the policeman, like something like a hundred and fifty dollars an hour or something like that, they'll uh, and if it's their off time, they'll come and they'll bring a car. But right about two days before we were supposed to shoot. There was some. Bad... There was a. There was a meeting. Well, well, there was some bad cop vibes going on in Florida at that time. Yeah, and they had a freaking like citywide cop meeting. Yes, where they discussed our film. Yeah, they discussed. They like, well, you know, we don't know how the police are going to come off, in and this. we just don't want to be portrayed at all, at all, anywhere on film ever. <laughs> right, and that you know, and that kind of thing happens all but... the time. In, but Hobo Jesus was made prior right. to this time. So And you're also in this like really, you know, you call it small town. The smaller yeah. the town the better. Like you're you're dealing with people who, who live there, who work there, who, who grew are up there. Proud of their town. Proud of their town. You know, yeah. the small small town is like indie gold, independent film gold. So you guys had talked to the guys at the at the police department. We were going to use inside the department in a holding cell. We were going to use a police car. They were, they let you left with like police uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think someone had gained too much weight and you got all their old stuff. And, and I still have a couple of those pieces. They no, allowed you, me to you, keep. You, there was a costuming networking yeah, event. Yeah, there was a, yeah, there, there was a halfway to Halloween party a couple of weeks ago and I wore that costume. You guys then you're driving around, you come along this street it's like basically just, just this beautiful open straightaway, like on both sides Country of road, the road. Field, nothing. Yeah, just fields. And then at the end of this street is a farmhouse that is almost identical to the one from my inspiration. Well, I I, uh, I looked over to Josh who was driving. Okay, and I said, you know what we really need is that kind of place right there. That that house. That's exactly that's exactly what we need. And I said, as a matter of fact, turn around and we go and we start talking to uh, knock on a complete stranger's door. Yeah, we knock on his door. Hey, I'm John Russell King. This is my partner Josh. We're making a movie. Yeah, and basically we convince him that uh, we would this love to shoot sweet in his old guy. Sweet love old to guy. shoot in his house. Okay. This just an adorable older older man, you know, lives alone there, has been renovating. <clears throat> so what we find out later, we're told the story, you know, because he's like, he enjoyed the hell out of being part of the movie. And <clears throat> he's... He, he like painted the house he, and, you he, know, he, I mean, he, he, he went reno- crazy. He yeah. had been renovating for like a year and he renovated everything else to finish the house for our film in like a month. It was just beautiful. It was a perfect location. So, but we find out later, the story was, you guys left. Right. He called one of his friends and he said, you'll never believe what happened. These guys are making a movie and they knocked on my door and blah, blah, blah. And his friend goes, they're scammers. They're they're just coming in there trying to look at all the stuff you got and they're going to rob you. He's scared <laughs> by this guy's notion. So, you know, he calls up the cops. He calls the cops. So, and the co- he goes, hey, you know, I just had some guys come by my house, said they're making a movie, you know, maybe they want to rob me, I don't know. And the, <laughs> and the police department goes, oh yeah, those guys, John and Josh, yeah, they were just here at our place too. We gave them a uniform. <laughs> they're making the movie here too. So, so. It was, yeah, so it was pretty perfect. And the people of uh, Castleton on the Hudson... Well, we had the premiere. We had probably 400 people at it. I sold mean, a lot of DVDs. They were so excited. <laughs> well, and we had tons of extras from the town. Yeah, that's the that's the beauty. If you if you have a script or if you want to tailor make a script to a town, that's a smart thing to do because that whole town's going to come out. Go to the town meetings. Mm-hmm. You know, involve yourself in the community. 
Ask them what they're proud of. You know, you know think about think of uh, something like a mayor for a town like that. It's not his full time job, but he still has power. So you, it's just like you're walking up to just anybody, but he actually has authority and he can well, introduce he, you to people. And we had a we had a library that we had scheduled and everything in another town, and mm-hmm. it had fallen through. And we actually called the mayor of the town. That we were shooting in and said, hey, we're screwed. We, yeah. We, we have need, no library. We need for, a library for, for tomorrow. For like a couple days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's like, oh, no problem. We'll just call a town library. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was just having the cooperation of the uh, local government in that situation is just so incredibly useful. Yeah. You know, because, you know, we're just, we're shoot we're shooting uh, all of the, the streets and, and... All over the place. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that upstate, they love filmmaking and there's not a lot of like red tape. They, you know, you don't have permits and well, all this kind of stuff. Well, in that little town, we yeah. did not have to worry about red tape. Yeah. Yeah. If you were in Albany, you might have, you know, to deal with it a little bit well, more. Well, I mean, the cops are in the film. So like, <laughs> they yeah. knew. We would just tell the cops, hey, we're going to be over here this day. Hey, we're right. going to be over there this day. Hey, we're going to do this, you know, in case you hear anything. Yeah. We had an entire motorcycle gang that came yeah, through. Yeah. We told them, we yeah. said, we're going to ride a motorcycle gang through the middle of town by the church. Yeah. Just so you know. And they were like, oh, cool. We're going to come see. Yeah. Because I'd always, I, I'd always loved those shots where, you know, you've got like you know 25 motorcycles and they're like driving through town you know sort of like but the motorcycle and, gang was from around there too. oh yeah they were they, they were just super nice and super wonderful people uh and but it it really uh, harkened back to uh the wild one or something like that you know just really you know cool imagery that that's one of the fun things that you can do as a filmmaker is you can sort of take these like iconic ideas and make them your own. You can kind of, you know, put them through your lens. Well, that, yeah, Hobo Jesus was just a really, really awesome movie yeah. to shoot. Yes, and uh, feel, f- uh, feel free to watch it. What, okay. what was the other thing you want to cover? One last thing before we head off to start our day. You will often uh, mentor people, right? <laughs> you will often, like, maybe have consultations, sure. you know, things like that with them. Yeah. Um, Everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, of course, the, the best way to get a head start is ask somebody who's already done it. Right. You know, find a mentor. So uh, last night you you just like randomly got somebody who needed. I think, it was, uh, I think it was on a Facebook group and he was talking about basically what happened. You know, sometimes people just fall into uh, a possibility. This uh, gentleman from uh, Washington uh, was approached by someone who saw footage that he had been shooting for his church. And this person said, uh, I'm interested in seeing a documentary done about... He doesn't even know who it is. Nobody knows. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to sign an NDA to find out who this uh, documentary is going to be about. He right. doesn't even know yet. So the subject is unknown, but right. this guy has been shooting... Evidently, it's really good footage for his church. Yeah, it's, it's like 110,000 uh, people. You know, nice well, nice size city. He, he lives and works in a small town. He's been filming, you know, things for his church and really had no aspirations to get into film. Right. So somebody says, hey, would you make a documentary? And he goes, sure. And then realizes he has no idea how to do that. Well, he goes, I really want to. Right. How the hell would I do that? Right. So he, through Kismet... Gets you. Gets me. You gets know, in contact with you. I've been in. I've been involved with you know, like you know, dozens of documentaries. You know, with Tracy editing them and me ading them and co-directing them. Co-directing. And they have a call last night, and one of the things that John and I will often do, because you know the way our house is laid out, he can be on the other side of the house, but there's like a long walk through and I can still hear you and you talk really loud obviously and so I will listen to your conversation yes. and if I hear a hole right I'll text you she'll text me I'll text you an and answer. she gets mad if I don't use her text no 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 if I if I don't say what she's what what no, she is texting me no that's not it sometimes <laughs> you won't a- approach the subject and I I wonder Oh, why did he not bring that up? Yeah, and some, like, and sometimes I'll be like, oh shit, I, I should have been looking at this text that you had just 
you know, giving me all of this gold, you know. No, I mean, you're on the phone. It's it's your thing. You know the vibe, but I am hearing holes. Or right. I'm hearing, like last night, he was saying, like, what questions should I ask them? Right. And you were basically, you know, on a roll about budget and, like, you know, you were getting really too deep. He was just wondering how. What do I need to know so I can basically win he has, this? He has to secure the documentary, right? And, right. And what what should he know to know what he's getting into? He literally needed to know things like questions to ask, like what what do you perceive the budget being? Right. You know, when would you want this done by? You how? Know? Uh, what's the style of documentary that you're talking about? How right. much access am I going to what have? What do we you want know? the yeah. audience to get out of this documentary? Right, right. You know, because a documentary is, I think, even more than a feature. In a feature, we can kind of be like, you know, hoping that the audience picks up on certain things. But mainly, we want to entertain them. And mm. if they get something out of it, great. If it sticks with them, great. But in a doc... Well, it's really the opposite of that. You yeah. want them to get something out of it, and hopefully we entertain them. We have a perspective. Right. That, and we're trying to entertain them to get them to see this perspective. Right. In a doc. I was texting you because I was like, you're ignoring this question. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, he, he's asking this. You know, he's like right. much more beginner than you're realizing. And, and you were <clears throat> right. Definitely. And then you built upon that, you know. And he was just like, you were... I heard him. He was just like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Like, you're blowing my mind. I'd never think to consider this or ask this or do this. And I also hear you working with a lot of people out of film school. And the same thing happens. Because when you're kind of lacking real world, world experience, you sometimes you just don't even know the 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 foundational elements right of where to start well there was a really uh, uh we do this thing called lunch club uh which i would recommend to any uh entrepreneur actually which is basically it's an app that you uh, set up on your phone that uh connects you up with people in a particular field so depending on what you're looking for are you looking for angel investing are you looking for other entrepreneurs are you looking for you know, whatever it is you're specifically looking for, they'll take other people that are looking for what you bring to the table and you'll have like a 45 minute conversation over Zoom with them. And uh, there was a guy that you talked to yesterday that uh, put it very, very well as far as uh, people who are beginning. Yeah, well, and and I told the guy, I'm like, I don't know if you're coming up with this off the top of your head, if this is something you've been taught or learned or if you read it somewhere, but this is just the so, so succinct hard work compounds. You know, I mean, we all know about like compounding interest and, and how money grows, right? But we don't understand that our hard work is compounding too, you know, okay, I got to make a documentary film. How am I going to do that? You can't start there. The guy was on the right track. What questions do I need to ask this company so that I know if I can do this documentary or if I should or, or, you know. Or do they even have the resources? Like sometimes people will just talk, 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 talk. And then you, you know, you got to call their bluff. You, you have to put a dollar figure. Yeah. To it. You have to say, oh, are you really serious about that? Here you go. I'm pushing my chips into the middle of the table. You know, are you actually playing the game with me or not? Or are you going to fold? Right. Right. So, uh, and, and basically that every day, you know, you wake up and you're not making a documentary every day. You're not making a film every day. You're just doing today. We have to find this role to cast and we have to find this location to shoot in. Right. You know, it's just small. This piece of equipment, this crew member, it's it's just a series of little Tetris boxes. Yes. <laughs> and they they're falling and you're turning them and they are I'm I'm doing this analogy for you Tracy because you you love Tetris. Yes. <laughs> you 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 get all of all of it in line and then it goes And then away. it disappears. It disappears. Uh, when, once once it's disappeared that means you own it. That means that that is now part of what you have been building. Right. That's that's in your bag of tricks. And it compounds. So get those two things today. If you only get one of them, 
that one gets carried over to tomorrow. If you if you have two things to get, you got to cast somebody and get a location. You don't don't get a location, but you cast somebody. The location carries over to tomorrow. And, and then and tomorrow then, you had the location, and then and you had uh, finding the money. Okay, so now I, I have to get the location and the money. Well, if I get both of those, then I can just do what I was supposed to do the next day instead of carrying something over. Well, you're probably going to get the location and have to carry over the money. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you're, you're always having to carry over the money. You're always. Yeah. You you're might. never going to have the money. <laughs> just just have, have the money on the list at all times. At all times, yes. <laughs> but also, I will say this about, you know, yes, absolutely, budget your film and all that. But one thing you have to remember is, like, creativity is free and it doesn't cost money right and as long as you can creatively look at a problem and figure it out and you don't have to throw money at it you're saving money you're not you're not putting that money from your budget into something one of the things that you will hear me say all the time is that the scripture says money answers all things okay that's the scripture money answers all things what that means then is when you don't have money you need to come up with the answer. Right. Okay, because the answer to all your problems is, okay, just pay for it. You know, oh, I don't have this. Okay, I now will take a pile of money and I will get this or I will buy this uh, person's skills. Or, But when you don't have that, you need to come up with a different kind of answer. For instance, whenever we lost the location for the library in Hobo Jesus, if we had money, we could just throw money at it, defer people to another day of shooting. You know, if they came in on a bus, send them home. Right. Like, whatever. We got the money to cover that. Right. We're just going to put it off to another day. We're going to work hard. We might have to pay more for this location because it's short notice. Right. You know, that's throwing money at it. Creativity is like calling the mayor in a panic. Or what? how can we rewrite the scene so that it's not in a library? Right. How can we alter ourselves to fit the situation that we're in now and you know some people in in film they get so rigid they really resist that it is a lot easier to mold yourself to the world than to mold the world to you okay the world is (laughs) it's a very large thing you can't control it So you need to morph and mold and make yourself work in whatever space the world gives you. I think that was it. You think that was it? (laughs) I mean, that seems like a final statement to me. I like it. All right. Well, uh, this is uh, John Russell Kring, and I'm just telling you, uh, don't watch FBI uh, Class of 09. It's it's just not worth your time. Do watch our film and leave a review so we can read it and laugh about it. We love doing that. Hobo Jesus. Please check it out. Lots of love to our my best friend in the world, Mr. Joshua Paul Owens. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Don't forget, we're sponsored by Movie Mode Merch. Oh, there we go. Oh, you remembered our sponsor. Well check, done. Check out their shirts. They're awesome. We're, we're getting good at this. I'm sure there'll be like a commercial answer in here. It's hard not to get romantic about movies. Thanks for listening to Married to Movies. John and Tracy will meet you for breakfast tomorrow. Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch. Comfortable graphic tees made by and for awesome filmmakers to wear on set and off. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. <laughs>